Good morning, everybody. This is Thursday in the fifth week of Easter. It is the start of our day at the end of our worship and uh, work and service week. Um, we have uh, we have morning prayer today, and that that actually concludes Study. our worship. We have uh, uh, we are taking a hiatus of evening prayer this week while Father's taking a class. And we are taking hiatus from all daily office next week while Father is away on retreat. So we have morning prayer today, and we will be back together again on Tuesday, May 31st, which follows uh, Memorial Day. So today's prayer will carry us through. Uh, thank you for being together. If you're following, if you're watching on Facebook or on uh, YouTube and have intercessions or prayers or thanksgivings you'd like to share, please add them to the comment box and we will add them. Um, we'll share them at the appropriate point of the office. If you have intercessions and want to add them later, we will read them and add them to our personal prayers and we will catch back up on, uh, as I said, Tuesday the 31st. So this morning, we remember Dunstan, who was, uh, he was born in the early 900s. So, you know, tripping on what century, we'll, we'll just say the, the early 900s. He lived near- 10th Cla century. Class 10th hmm? century, 10th century. Yeah, that's hard to say. Um, Glastonbury, I think, is- so he was born near Glastonbury. He had uh, high noble parents. This was obviously before the Norman Empire, uh, the Norman uh, conquest. So uh, it was a tumultuous time in what in where we now call England. Uh, Dunstan uh, was trained or schooled in a convent, but didn't join uh, religious orders until he was in his 30s when um, he, he had a skin disease that he feared was leprosy and took that as the time to uh, take orders and adopt a Bene Benedictine, Bene Benedictine, St. Benedict orders. So he was a monk and followed the Benedictine rule. There I go. Um, because of his parents' status, he was uh, in and out of, the in and out of favor with the many kings who came to, to rule and lost power and uh, up and down and up and down. Ultimately, Dunstan was named uh, Archbishop of Canterbury. And in that post, he uh, helped design the coronation of Edgar. He designed the coronation crown and redesigned the oath of the king, which um, more tightly connected it to us, uh, to God and not just, you know, politics. And it is the basis of the coronation that they still follow today. Dunstan is the, um, patron saint of, uh, Smiths. And I don't know why, but I'm betting father does. So I will so, hand uh, up to Father. Sil Silver Smiths. He was he was known to have made his own plate, um, and not by plate meaning that which we eat off of, but plating is the process of creating vessels um, where you hammer up a lump of silver or metal until it becomes malleable, and then you fashion it into a vessel. Very skill dependent and, and very, um, very beautiful way of creating things, but you also risk um, damaging the metal as you do it. So it's very, it's, it's, it's a very um, challenging way of doing things. And actually, and the Smiths, because as you can see from our illustration, um, one of the legends of Dunstan is as he was afflicted and tempted by the devil. One time he um, insisted on providing shoes for the devil and proceeded to shoe him as one would a horse, the agony of the devil inspiring him to release Dunstan from his temptations um, as Dunstan released him from the pain of having uh, horseshoes nailed to his cloven feet. And uh, Laura, do you know why that's significant? 
Because that's that's why we hang horseshoes over our doors now. Oh, Keep the okay, devil at yes. bay. Yep. Ah, okay. There you go. So yeah, Dunst, yes. and he's also credited with being an incredible illustrator and painter. Yes. Um, I did not include this, but one of uh, one of the really beautiful pieces that he is credited with drawing is actually a self portraiture of a beautiful uh, illustration of the Christ with a small monk kneeling at mm -hmm. his feet, and that's thought to be a self portrait of Dunstan. So we actually kind of know what he looks like by that. This was not a time when portraiture was practiced. Um, so there you go. And up until uh, Thomas Beckett, uh, Dunstan was the most uh, popular saint in England. Yeah, that's and right. I think he was buried, was he buried at uh, Westminster or Glastony? Glastonbury, um, his yeah. relatives I think, were, were interred there until the abbey was fell and then his, they were transferred. But the other thing that was really interesting about Dunstan is um, Edgar, the person you credited with that, he was out of favor with Edgar because of his uh, rather brusque style of dealing with kings. He tended to uh, give them a hard time and uh, that got him into a lot of trouble because he had a very high moral code and kings don't. So Edgar out on a hunt with uh, with uh, his companions, um, followed a stag. The stag in a panic ran off a cliff. The hounds went over it and his horse was about to go over it. And he swore that if he would survive, God would save him. He would restore Dunstan. And the horse miraculously uh, was uh, was able to skirt the lip of the cliff and uh, return him to safety. So he was a man of his word, went back and saved him. Um, Dunstan was also very effective in brokering peace between the warring uh, warring kingdoms of Mercia, Wessex, uh, Sax, uh, Sussex, and also um, the uh, region of the Anglo-Saxons. And this was important because that was the time of emerging from the Dane law. Um, so really a very tumultuous time in England um, and much of what Dunstan did in those days really created the England we know today. So there you go. There you go. All right. Well done, Laura. And again, go hang a horseshoe over your, over your door and keep the devil at bay. It's better than putting shoes on his cloven feet as Dunstan did. So. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me for the antiphon and invitatory. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. 
Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our Psalms this morning are 70 and 71. I will lead with the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord, do not delay. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me, and those who watch for my life consult together. They say, pursue and seize that person whom God has forsaken, for there is no one to deliver. O God, do not be far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. Let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long, though their number is past my knowledge. I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to all the generations to come. Your power and your righteousness, O oh God, reach the high heavens. You who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again from the depths of the earth. You will bring me up again. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. I will also praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you my soul also, which you have rescued. All day long, my tongue will talk of your righteous help. For those who tried to do me harm have been put to shame and disgraced. Glory to, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of, of Leviticus. You shall not any, eat anything with its blood. You shall not practice augury or witchcraft. You shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. You shall not make any gashes in your flesh for the dead or tattoo any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, that the land should not become prostituted and full of depravity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or wizards. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall rise before the aged and defer to the old, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. 
When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall not cheat in measuring length, weight, or quantity. You shall have honest balances, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall keep my statutes and all my ordinances and observe them. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle, Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation <clears throat> by the forgiveness of their sins. and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's second letter to the church in Thessalonica. Paul, Savannah, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is the evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fill, fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, together. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Direct your church, O Lord, into the beauty of holiness, that following the good example of your servant Dunstan, we may honor your son, Jesus Christ, with our lips and in our lives to the glory of his name, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me for a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. We pray for all those who are struggling with health concerns, with, with health treatments, we pray for their families and their caregivers. We pray for those who struggle with mental difficulties, with spiritual crises, that they may find peace and consolation. We pray for their families and caregivers. We pray for those who have died and we pray for consolation for their families. We remember especially Rose and Aunt Alma We pray for peace where there is conflict and uncertainty and for those who feel unsafe, unwell, unwelcome, that there may be healing and reconciliation. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the missionary diocese of Ladwar, the Anglican Church of Kenya, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the high school and college graduates. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone. That, uh, that concludes morning prayer. And that is the end of our worship week. We are together again on Sunday for Holy Eucharist. 8 a.m. in the church, uh, live streamed on Facebook, later posted to YouTube, and uh, again, 10 o'clock in the church. We are, as I said, off next week from the daily office while Father's on retreat. Our, our, uh, our ministries are, are not, on, on, not on retreat. We have uh, the shop at St. Peter's will be open. Alice's Cup Food Pantry will be open. Wednesday night supper will be open with the mini mart. Um, Restoration of community yoga. Uh, that's that's right. That starts next week. So all kinds of things going on. Check out our website to uh, to get all the details. St. Peter's Spotswood.org. And we will be back together, as I said, after Memorial Day for morning prayer on Tuesday, March 31st. Wherever you are, whatever you do, we wish you uh be a uh, blessed day, blessed week, and uh, welcome home to St. Peter's. We will be together again soon. Take care. God Take bless. Care oh, like you. and subscribe. And hit Ring the bell. The bell. Follow us. Give us the <laughs> thumbs up. Improve the algorithms. Help us to connect to each other. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.